okay, right? We all know this. This is something right from the start we all deal with. Content takes time. Content takes energy. Content takes planning. So the question I hear from a lot of people is, is this worth it? Am I wasting my time, basically, is what they're asking me. But they don't want to say it out loud. But that's what they mean. So we're going to talk about that, right? We're going to talk about whether or not it does anything for your business. So in this video, I'm going to quickly explain, first of all, what content uh, marketing is, because we want to make sure we're all talking about the same thing, right? Then we're going to address the value, the worth, however you want to look at it, of content marketing. Uh, we're going to talk about what content marketing does and doesn't do uh, for your business. And I'm going to give an example of how to get the most value from a single piece of content marketing. Sound good? I'm excited. We have a lot to go over on this one. So let's go ahead, go get comfy, and we're going to get started. <music> Okay, so content marketing, right? We know it's not easy. We know it takes time and effort and planning. And at some point, we all start to question whether or not it's worth it. Uh, and so that's what we're going to talk about on the show today. Matter of fact, I have a really cute, I think it's really cute. What do you think? I think we got a really cute little uh, intro for this one. You agree? I thought it was cute. <laughs> then again, I've been told that I get, you know, easily amused, but it is cute, right? Okay. All right. So let us dive in because we do have a lot to talk about. Um, as always, if you have any questions, go ahead, dive in, put them into the chat. Uh, if you have any stories, si suggestions, tips that you want to share with people, uh, by all means, go ahead and do that. All right. So let's start off with the basics. Okay. We won't spend a lot of time on this because I think everybody understands it, but I just want to make sure. I always like to make sure we're all starting from the same point. Okay. So content marketing is a type of marketing, right? One of many. Uh, that involves the creation and sharing of valuable, relevant, and consistent online material, videos, blogs, blah, 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 um, that does not explicitly promote a brand, but is intended to stim uh, stimulate um, interest. Sorry, don't get weird. Uh, in, in its products, uh, thereby attracting uh, and retaining a clearly defined audience, and ultimately to drive uh, profitable cu customer action. So like, I want to dive in on this, right? That's why... It's, this is a lot to read. So let's get to the important points of this, right? Okay, so valuable, relevant, and consistent. Okay, those are the big three, right? If we're gonna talk stools here, it's a three-legged stool. And those are the, the thing, those are the legs, those are the pillars that are holding up the, the whole goal of this. So you wanna make sure that the things that you are creating, the things that you are sharing, have value to your audience, right? And that, that's the whole trick to content marketing is don't think about what it is that you are trying to sell uh, or your point of view or that you what you want to do is address it from this point of view of your customer right their concerns their pain points whatever it is that might trigger their interest in your stuff you want to focus on that you want to focus on things that you can provide to them that address and help them with those kinds of issues uh, you want to be relevant right you want to make sure that you're talking to the right audience that's very important uh, and you want to make sure that you know the stuff that you're providing is timely right you don't want to be you know showing them the same video that you did three years ago uh, for an outdated version of whatever it is you're offering you got to keep updating it you got to make sure that it's tied into the today and the tomorrow and not too far in the back in the yesterday now you can do some yesterday stuff but generally most of your content should be today and tomorrow um, and consistent consistency is key in content marketing because content marketing is not a automatic right it's not the stuff at the end of the aisle, the impulse purchase. Content marketing is about all of the steps that you have to take so that your customer can take their steps to finding you, right? Very rarely do people start to think about, oh, I have a need, I have a want, I have a desire, and then immediately go do it. There's usually research and talking to friends and all that kind of stuff. So you want to make sure you're a part of that process. The other part that's key to your content marketing is that it should not explicitly promote your brand, right? So it, the whole idea of content marketing is to generate interest and buzz and to start to build your reputation online or expand your reputation online. So you want to be very careful about the point of view and what it is that you are providing to folks. Does that make sense? I, I'm guessing it probably does. 
that way when you cover those two pieces then you achieve the third so this this like i said this is a long tail kind of this is an effort thing this is something that builds over time okay so you're, you're this is you're going to put in this time and effort because doing so is what attracts and retains the correct audience right because if if you are providing material that doesn't resonate with somebody that's actually a good thing because they're not your audience you want your content marketing to help pre-filter the people who are going to come to you so that they are almost pre-vetted right because by consuming the content that you've given them right and reacting positively to it they've self-identified as somebody that might be in the market for your goods your products your services so that's very important and that is what in the end will drive them to reach out to you to get the sales process going all right mark here you go i promised him treats <laughs> gotta follow through on your promises okay uh so just a couple of things on that before i go to the next one um i want to make sure that we're very clear about when we're talking about the quality and the tone and the content of the content <laughs> the contents of the content all right so you want to make sure that it is from your customer's point of view you want to make sure that it is a in clear and friendly language you don't want to rely heavily on jargon and acronyms and all that unless that's the language that your customer speaks so you make sure it's very clear and you want to stay out of the area where you would might start feeling kind of spammy or out of touch or tone deaf uh slimy dated right you don't be too sales pitchy um and so for example right now at the time that i am recording this uh we're all across the world we're <laughs> globally dealing with uh the, the virus problem so this is a really good time to maybe take a step back quickly after the show go and check your marketing campaigns make sure that there's nothing that you have scheduled or planned that is going to feel tone deaf right or inappropriate in this time period it's going to happen to somebody i don't want it to happen to you people so make sure that you're going to take the time to go and check right make sure that you're not doing any like what might have been funny a month ago kind of content about health or viruses or anything like that um they're going to be really inappropriate right now so make sure that you put a pause on those uh so that's what we're talking about you want to make sure that what you are providing is serving your audience and not putting you in a bad light right you want to be good light serving the audience you want those two to be, things to be in perfect balance uh because that is absolutely key to what we're talking about here okay i just it's a timely thing right now and the thing is i know later you like you may not be watching this now you'd be watching this six months from now and this virus thing may be gone but something else will have happened because that's life so whatever is going on in the world or your neighborhood or your industry you just want to make sure that your content is in sync with your message and how you want to present yourself given the environment of the world that you are in at that moment make sense okay let's go back here we go got that nice little transaction i love that so content uh marketing provides right so what are the benefits content marketing provides your brand visibility and awareness which is gold right it may be the only way that you could reach these members of the audience right they may not know you exist they may not know your product exists they may not have even heard about it they may not even know that they need it right if you've come up with something that's new cutting edge they can't go and necessarily search for that right because they don't even know to ask for it and that's a tough sell and, and uh, there's a bunch of us who are in that boat on a pretty regular basis um so that's one of the things it can do it can make either you know your brand become you know the, become, they can become aware of it there or if they're already aware of your brand and they're already consuming your content it's a great way for you to expose them to new concepts new ideas that you have coming down the pike of course presented not in a sales pitch way but in a content way um it's going to give your brand perception a great boost right so even if people are aware of you by seeing your content seeing how you present yourself getting the value from what you are presenting to them they are uh, the, the perception of your company is going to expand and increase which is also going to increase your reputation which is huge right i mean that, that's what that's what business comes down to for humans right we we want to do business with people that we feel good about right that we feel we can trust that we like um that we think are going to treat us well and who are, who as a result of us doing business with them are going to make us look good right these are the underlying human 
decision-making processes are at work. Again, these are not necessarily conscious, but it is the kind of thing that influences how people decide to do business with the other people. Uh, hey, John. Um, so that is very important, and content marketing is absolutely key for that. Um, and it's a great way to educate your audience, right? So, you know, if you're a plumber, you could do content about, you know, changing out the washers uh, or replacing the filter in your uh, water softener or, or whatever it is. Um, but it's a great way to provide that kind of value. Now, some people are like, well, I'm not going to give that stuff away for free, but that's the point. The point is to selectively provide this kind of assistance, this kind of help, this kind of information so that they start to know, like, and trust you, right? That That's what you're trying to achieve here. And you're also just doing a good thing. I mean, you know, there's nothing wrong with a little good karma every once in a while. So just by putting that information out there, helping somebody, you know, in a moment when they needed the help, right? They had a problem. They went, they did a search. Uh, you know, like I said, maybe, the, you know, the water pipe burst or something. Um, the water heater stopped working. And so they're in a panic, they go and they maybe, you know, do a search and they find your YouTube video or, you know, your article on how to, you know, troubleshoot that kind of a thing. You become their hero in that moment, right? If you are able to, in that moment, help them feel like they've taken control of the problem, even if they couldn't sit, fix it themselves, if they felt like they were able to take control of it, maybe reduce the severity of it until they could bring in somebody like you, uh, that is truly valuable to them which makes you appear truly val valuable to them also because you were there for them at a time when they were stuck so that is absolutely key all right murphy this is the last treat that i have for you so make it last <laughs> he's cute but i know somehow he's well it's my fault i started giving him a treat to keep him quiet in here and now when we come in and we sit down his he starts to drool basically <laughs> that's just how it is all right so that is what we're talking about here. We're talking about getting, well, why you would want to be spending time on content management, right? What, what is it that you're getting out of it? What is it that your customers are getting out of it, right? So by providing useful, helpful, informative, clear content, right? You're going to get that visibility, that perception. Uh, you're going to get the uh, reputation boost. You're going to get the education. And it's an awesome way to take existing fans Right? So everything I've talked about is more around maybe, except maybe education, more around maybe acquiring new members to your audience. But it also works with your existing audience, right? And it may take them from that, you know, they kind of are aware of you and they kind of, you know, have it in the back of their head to maybe turning them into fans, right? And maybe turning those fans into brand advocates or champions who are out there actively telling people about your business in a really good way just because they feel invested in in your business right how, how that's just a huge win there's no other way word for it right while you're focusing on doing things for them and helping them and providing them content uh, you immediately turn around and get you know people who are becoming fans of your business and advocates and out there telling people good things about you and recommending you uh so that's really important the other thing that it does for you i know it just keeps giving it's the gift that keeps on giving it also boosts your seo okay because it's going to be out there. You're putting fresh content out there. That helps the search engines. They like to see that. Um, it can generate leads. Okay. Not, you know, I'm not saying that you can go and put out one piece of content and you're suddenly going to get leads. That's not how it works. But by consistently doing it, by consistently providing that value, you will get leads out of it over time. Um, it's a great PR tool. Also, if you are providing good information, uh, then again, you know, that makes your company be seen in a positive light by people who are consuming it, right? Again, if you had helped that person out who had the hot water heater die, you know, and they were able to either, you know, fix it enough to get another shower out of it or, you know, stop it from leaking all over the floor or anything because of the information you provided, trust me, they're going to be fans of yours. They're going to suggest to other people. Matter of fact, when they're telling the story about what happened, they're going to mention you and how you provided the information. And so that is going to pay off for you down the road because it'll happen to somebody else. And they'll say, hey, I heard about this great video. Go check this out. And so on and so forth. Um, the other benefit to content management, uh, content management, content marketing, content management will cover on a different show, um, is that it is much, much, much less expensive financially. Um, than traditional marketing. It's also less expensive time-wise because you're not having to like deal with third parties and go back and forth and approve and deny and all that stuff. So it is a much more streamlined, much more efficient and less expensive way to do your marketing while it continues to provide a longer lifespan and reach. So like if you were doing traditional marketing, right? If you did uh, 
ad on local television or in the paper or you know however it is that you would normally do your local marketing it might be in front of somebody for a fraction of a second once right maybe but this other content that you put out when you're putting it out online it has a much longer lifespan right it's out there for however long you choose to leave it there it's available through the search engines for as long as you want to leave it out there and really for most cases you don't want to take it down um, it is the kind of thing that somebody can forward so you're going to get way more eyeballs on it uh, you're probably going to get more repeat eyeballs on it and you're going to get the kind of thing where people are sharing it and recommending it and so on and so forth so again it just it's hugely, hugely beneficial. Um, and so that is something to keep in mind in those moments when you feel like you're struggling, which by the way, we're gonna talk about in a minute. Um, so if you think about all these things, visibility, awareness, perception, reputation, education, turning your fans, uh, turning your customers into fans, your fans into advocates and champions, getting your SEO boost, generating leads, getting good PR out of it, right? Saving money and getting more traction long-term on it. That's not too shabby, right? <laughs> Uh, that's a long list of positives for you and all you've done so far is just reach out to try to help people that you haven't met yet it's pretty cool all right let's talk a little bit about what content management uh, content management I don't know why that's in my head all of a sudden content marketing isn't okay it's not magic at all there is work involved okay <laughs> but so is, so is running a business right so obviously you're not afraid of work if you're running your own business. This is just another piece of your business. So not magic. It's not a just add water kind of shortcut, okay? It's not, it's not a microwave dinner solution, okay? There is going to be some effort on your part. But we're gonna talk about, in a few minutes, ways that you can squeeze as much value out of that work as possible, um, which is actually not a whole lot of extra work. Uh, so you can do one thing and get lots of value out of it. Um, the other thing that I want to make clear here is that content marketing cannot close the sale for you. That's not the point. Okay. The point is to let people know you exist, to provide them information that they might need to answer questions that they might have to educate them. So they feel smarter about whatever it is, your goods, your products, your services, because that's, you know, nobody likes to feel stupid. Nobody wants to look foolish. So sometimes people won't reach out just because they're afraid that, you know, you're going to think poorly of them for not knowing everything about it. Well, of course, you know, logically you understand and they understand that that's silly. We can't all know everything, but on an emotional level, human beings don't like looking foolish or looking stupid. So if you could provide that education, right? If you, you know, there are questions that people ask you on a regular basis. If you cover those in your content, you're helping those people out there to feel more secure about pursuing more information about what you're offering. So the education part of it is good, but you know, Again, not going to make the sale for you, not magic. Um, and the other thing, which um, I had somebody last year, it took me a while to figure out this is where they were going, but basically they were looking for help with content marketing to take a failing product and make it sound like it was good. Needless to say, I did not take that gig. Why would you do that? And also we can't do that, right? So again, it's not magic, okay? It is not going to fix what's broken in your business at all. Um, it is all about helping to build your audience, your customer base, and to take the existing ones and move them up the ladder a little bit. Um, it is about getting awareness so that people will be more likely to come to you when they get to the point where they are confident and ready to have that conversation about doing business. Clear? Are we good? Yes? All right. Let's keep rocking then. Um, the next thing that I want to point out to you is that there are real numbers around this, right? Okay, so in a recent survey, uh, it was done like in the late part of uh, 2019, uh, respondents said that this type of content being available helps to raise brand perception, right? And their awareness of the brand that is producing it. But also, they, they made it very clear that before they get around to making a purchasing decision, more than 75% of the people look at at least five pieces of content. Um, and more than 40% looked at 10 or more before they moved forward. Now, put this in context, okay? This is not saying that they sat down one day, they looked at five things and they made a phone call. They had a thought, they saw something, maybe they read a little something, maybe they saved the bookmark and went back to it later. Then maybe they saw something else, which maybe suggested something else and they dug down. So this is a time thing, okay? So 
you're going to have these pieces out there. You're going to want to cross-reference between them. You're going to want to make sure that, you know, they're available, that, you know, but you're, you're got to, you have to be realistic about your expectations. It is not content, sale, content, sale. That's not how this works. So they're going to take their time depending on who they are and how they think. Um, you know, maybe there'll be just a couple of pieces before they start to move forward. Sometimes it's going to be a lot of pieces and a lot more time before they move forward. The point is, you're going to keep doing this. You're going to keep putting this stuff out there. You're going to start filling really the pipeline, right? So while it may take a while to get from here and travel this way, it will, right? As long as you keep filling <laughs> the pipeline, right? That's the whole trick here. Um, so just you know, keep your expectations realistic so you don't get frustrated is basically what I'm going to for this. Um, if you create enough helpful content, right? And that's not from your perception, that's from their perception, right? So you may do 15 pieces, you know, over a couple of months, but if they find three of those helpful, that's good, right? If they find none of those helpful, they're not your audience um, or you need to change your content. But if they, if you create enough, right? And they, start to see that pattern of you consistently providing this kind of help, this kind of content, they're going to value you as a resource and respect your brand before they've even talked to you. So again, it makes it easier when they do reach out because they've already reached a comfort level, right? They've already on some level in their brain committed to your business and your, your brand. Um, when they repeatedly come to you as a resource, right? And then somebody, either them or somebody that they know has a need for your service, service, right? They'll think of and recommend you instead of competition, right? So if somebody happens to mention in passing, you know, they're standing at the water cooler, they're waiting in line for coffee and says, oh, geez, I gotta get my water heater replaced or, uh, you know, I, my car needs a new transmission or whatever, whatever your business is. Um, they'll say, hey, you know, I've been watching this, you know, person and they've been doing this, you know, content and I got this download and it really helped me when I was trying to you know, fix the time on my clock, right? We just went through daylight savings time again. And have, I know most of us are still driving around in cars that where it hasn't updated, it doesn't do it automatically for you. So it's that kind of thing where it's like, you know, they had something happen, they got aware of you, you provided information to them, that happened a few times, and then another event happened and they're like, hey, you should go check them out, it's really cool. So the main part of this session here, the section is you need to set clear goals right? And reasonable expectations for your content marketing. So you don't get frustrated. Uh, and by doing so, and by being consistent and continually putting out content and keeping improving it and making it available, you're going to reach your goal. You're going to reach your audience and you're going to expand your audience. Make sense? Good. All right. So if we have any questions so far, I'm going to check in a minute. So you can go ahead and put those in chat. Um, but I did just want to clear up one thing because I do know that there, it causes some confusion. Um, so in case you're wondering, content marketing is a type of digital marketing, okay? But it's not the same thing, right? So you can't, you shouldn't use those two terms interchangeably, um, generally, uh, because digital marketing is sort of the umbrella term. So digital marketing includes content marketing, but it also includes ads, promotion, sponsorships, all that kind of thing. Um, so just so that we're clear, um, content marketing is exactly what it sounds like. It's focused on the content and it is a type of digital marketing, but it is not all of digital marketing. Okay. All right. So in the next section, we're going to talk about how to deal with some of the typical challenges and frustrations that we all face, right? When working on our content marketing. Uh, but it looks like we are good, right? There's some conversations going on, which is great. Uh, but if you don't have any questions, I'm going to just keep going because we do have a lot to cover. Um, okay. So let's talk about how to deal with some of the typical challenges and frustrations that we all face working on content marketing, right? The first one generally for people is, I don't even know what to create. I don't even know where to start. We got gotcha. you. Write that down. So some examples is, this is not the complete be, end all be all list, right? But here are some ideas, right? For the types of content you can create. Blog posts, if you don't have a blog on your website, it's easy enough usually to add one on. If you don't have a website, <laughs> Please go get your website. Even if it's a one page website, that's fine. But you need to have a website because all of your content marketing should point to your website, right? You don't want it to point to third parties. You can be on Facebook, you can be on Instagram, you can be on Pinterest, all those places. But 
make sure that everything that you put out while mentioning those other things, everything points back to your website because that is the one point in the cyber universe that you have complete control over, right? Tomorrow, Facebook may change the rules and decide that only hairdressers can use it for advertising, right? Which is great for the hairdressers, not so much for the rest of us. So make sure that you have that website, even if it's one page. If you need help, if you don't know what to ask, reach out, let me know. It, it's not a big deal. Also, I've done shows on it, so you can go back and look. If you go to uh, YouTube, uh, to the Your Tech Coach channel, uh, and search for one-page websites, we got you covered. Okay, so anyway, let's go back. I just, I can't say that enough to people because there's still a lot of people who don't have websites. So, blog posts, definitely a big, big win for you. It keeps your website fresh, which makes the search engines happy. Um, it's a great place to, for people to automatically default to when they're like, hey, I know they said something about it. They'll go and they'll check your website. They'll check your blog. So make sure you do blog posts. Social media posts. Now, you don't have to be in all of them, right? Pick a couple. If you're not doing it at all, maybe expand if you are already. Um, but you should be using some social media, whichever one is the best fit for you. And again, I've done previous shows on that if you need help. Email newsletters huge win uh, if you have a mailing list. Um, if you don't, then you build one up and then you can start to send out to those folks. Um, photos, right, on your website, on Instagram, on Facebook, put them everywhere. Uh, if you have, you know, products, you take pictures of the products, uh, you know, or pictures of them in use, wh whatever it is that will catch somebody's eye. Uh, so for example, I work a lot with a, a bike shop. So, you know, we do shots of the bikes and all that kind of stuff, but we also show like, you know, the, the um, team that they sponsor, uh, the kids riding bikes. Uh, so they show those kind of things, or, you know, they show repair pictures, you know, to go along with their blog articles, but make sure that you're including photos because people tend to stop as they're scrolling through things. If there's a photo there, um, it, it's eye catching the brain. It makes the brain happy, um, which makes them more likely to look at the rest of your content. So make sure you're including photos all across the place. Um, do a podcast, right? Uh, podcasts are very easy to get set up. Uh, and there's plenty of people out there who can help you, you know, if you're trying to get the ball rolling, but it's a great way, again, to start to get into a consistent habit and get your content out there, uh, make it easy to consume, right? People are listening to podcasts all over the place on their way to work, when they're out jogging, in the gym, uh, you know, while they're in the kitchen making dinner. So blog posts are definitely an underused tool that you, could, you should consider. Videos, right? <laughs> Videos, whether recorded or live, uh, are a great way to go. They don't have to be as long as my show, which tends to run about a half hour. You can do two, three minute videos, you know, little how to's, little uh, Instagram stories or Facebook stories or Instagram lives, whatever it is that you're comfortable with. You know, if you want to record some things, you know, show an example of how to do something um, that's tied to what it is your goods and um, services are about, uh, do a little recording, you know, get yourself a, you know, relatively cheap, um, Editor, there's all kinds of tools out there online or, or uh, software that you can install and do a couple of videos, you know, that you can post out there. Um, ebooks. Ebooks are a great uh, social media um, marketing, con uh, content marketing uh, tool. Really not hard to do. Literally, you can open up, you know, Google Docs, Microsoft Word, whatever, whatever tool you have on your computer that, you know, you can write things in. Um, pretty much in all of them now, there's a default where if you go file print, if you look, there'll be a print to PDF option. It's really that easy, uh, super simple. You can tie them to your emails. You can put them on your uh, website, make them available. They are a huge value. Just make sure you put your logo, your business name, and your contact information on it so that when they print it out and it's being passed around, that goes with it. Webinars are an awesome tool, awesome, awesome tool for these types of you know, content sharing things. Um, you can also turn them into like little mini events, right? You can make them invitation only, or you can just, you know, start to put the word out there about it and keep the door open, right? It's kind of an open house kind of thing. Come on in, you know, we're going to be talking about this. I'm going to show you that. Uh, huge win for people. People get really excited about it. People get very engaged during them. There's usually a, a chat feature in most of the tools that you're going to use. There are free tools out there as well as paid ones. So don't let that hold you back. If you're new to it, you're not sure about it. Try a couple free ones first. Um, and then of course, you know, live events, right? Uh, that could be anything from like, if you have a storefront, you know, having some sort of event there or doing it, you know, online this way. Um, it could be going out, you know, into your community, right? It may be sponsor 
uh, you know, a booth at a local fair or, you know, a team in town, like, you know, the, the bike shop that they, they sponsor the, the local kids biking team and the adult team too. Um, so there's, there's lots of different ways, right, that you can tie your content marketing to different things. A mix is usually your best option, right? If you're just starting, pick out one, two, or three, just, just to get the ball rolling. Um, but these are a really good way to get things started, to kind of think about, you know, how you want to, how you're comfortable communicating this kind of information. And then, you know, don't be afraid to push your boundaries a little bit and try something else after you get the ball rolling a little bit. Does that make sense to everybody? Are we, are we doing good? Am I losing you? Um, I do want to ask it, you know, if you find this content helpful, um, entertaining, whatever, uh, if you would, you know, do the like, follow, share, thumbs up thing, um, that really does help uh, me get the word out uh, so that the different search engines will bump me up too. So I appreciate if you take the time to do that. It is a big help for me. All right, let's keep rocking. Sorry, dog's making noises. I don't know if you guys can hear him, but he's, he's pumpering around. So then let's talk about the next thing, right? So the next issue for most people is, okay, I want to blog, right? Or I want to start to do Facebook Live, right? That's a good place to go. Um, you know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna jump off here for a second. I'm gonna tell you a story, right? So at this point, some of you out there are going, yeah, I don't know that I'm really buying this. I'm not sure that it pays off. So let me tell you a quick story. So I started to get back into crocheting okay in a big way um, and it started because I was on Twitch and I came across uh, a Twitch broadcaster there called a hair affair hair as in rabbit H-A-R-E um, she does two three times a week she does a couple of hours on uh, Twitch she does projects she answers questions I mean she's just super friendly is able to clearly explain what can be <laughs> a confusing thing um, and because of her patience and her willingness to explain things, like I've gotten back into this in a big way. So much so that like now I'm looking for information and so I'm finding content and because of the content that I'm finding that I find works for me, makes sense to me, I am now following those brands and I'm buying that kind of yarn, right? And I bought the hooks from those people because that's how this is working, right? I suddenly got a new interest. I have very few analog. <laughs> To be honest, but I have very few analog things in my life. Um, so this is one of the few analog projects that I have going on in my life. Uh, it's good to have something that isn't, all, you know, with the technology, it's good to take a break. Um, but because of that one thing, right, I have now gotten into worlds and started to deal with vendors and you know, content that I would not have gotten involved with, you know, six months, a year ago. Um, and it's paying off because I'm buying from those, but also it's paying off for a hair affair. She freely gives her time she freely gives of her experience right she gives instruction she gives education she gives support right and encouragement um and then in the, you know you you become part of the um, community people are talking through that you know you find out hey they you know she's also a graphic designer guess what because of the time she spent helping people and when people found out she was a graphic designer there was already a trust in her and her work and her work ethic so that people started hiring her to do graphic design work, right? And then she's also got an Etsy store and she just happened, you know, to mention it once because she was working on some projects and she was trying to get stuff ready for Christmas. Um, so she explained the whole Etsy store things to people who had never heard about it. Um, yes, I had heard about it. I had never tried to use it. So she was really good. She explained all about it and everything. And so of course, you know, guess what? I got some Christmas gifts from her Etsy store. Uh, you know, she is doing blog posts that are very often either tied to her Twitch streams or are the ideas come from her Twitch streams, right? Somebody, are, somebody asks about a certain thing or enough of us over time have asked about how do you do this? How do you do that? She's like, you know what? I'm going to make this easy for people. I'm going to do a blog post and I'm going to do a video for it. And that way she can point people to it in addition to showing it to them. So if you are right in this moment thinking, oh, it doesn't work out, it does. It really does work out. Um, and I'm also an example of this, right? So I do this show, right? I don't get paid for this. I just do this. Um, there is work involved in this, right? You know, I have to plan it. I have to come up with content, all this kind of stuff. Um, I had to learn how to do the camera and the mics and the software and all that. But, you know, just by virtue of the fact that I've helped some people out, I've had business come out of it, right? I had somebody contact me and I helped them out with a webinar. I, I kind of ran behind the scenes so that they could focus on their webinar content. Um, I had somebody else reach out to me who wanted to update their website. So we moved them from a host that they weren't happy with to a new site. We're rebuilding the whole thing. So 
there is benefit to this, but it, you know, I've been doing this show now probably about a year, you know, and that kind of thing has only started to directly come from the show, you know, in the past couple of months. You know, before that, it was just all like word of mouth through customers and that kind of thing. So I'm just, I just wanted to quickly address that because it does pay off. <laughs> it actually does. All these things I'm telling you it does, it really, really does. Okay, so why, am, why did that pop into my head? Because when you're trying to think about what it is that you're going to, what kind of content you can provide, that's where you start with. Start with the questions people are asking you. Start with the things that, you know, you wish people knew or would ask you about, right? because maybe they don't even know to ask, right? You wanna tap into trends, right? You wanna tap into things like Twitter and Instagram, especially like what, keep an eye on the hashtags, the, the Twitter trending, Google trends, news headlines. Talk about things that are trending if you can tie them back nicely into your, um, into your content. Thank you, Ace. Yeah, it was, I, I, that was totally on the fly. Um, I, I, otherwise I would have, so Ace has put in comments everywhere, I'm guessing, yes. He's so good. Um, Ace is my mod and Ace is awesome. Uh, so if you're interested in a hair affair, um, just if you, if you just even if you're not into crochet, like if you just want to see how she does things, um, he put the link out there for you. So thank you for that. Uh, so yeah, so there, that, those are the types of things that you want to constantly be looking at when you're looking for content. I mean, first off, you're just going to start to think about the questions that you get asked most often because that's that's where you're going to get that's going to be your comfort zone. So it's going to give you a good way to start doing the stuff and start talking about it. Um, but it's also the logical thing to start with because if somebody has asked you those questions, there's a hundred more people out there that have that question too. So answer it for them. Make it easy for them to find that answer. Don't make them stress over it. Um, once you start to deal with, you know, once you've been doing content for a little while, you're going to hit a point where you're like, I don't know what to talk about. I'm stuck. I've got, I want to do a blog post this month. I don't know what to do. Um, don't stress, <laughs> okay? If you do this, if you think about the questions that come up, if you think about like, you know, if you have an FAQ, that's a gold mine for content. Um, if you think about what you want people to know or what you wish that they would ask about, um, you know, like if you're a contractor and you keep running into, you know, clients who start doing the project themselves and then call you in, which ends up making it more expensive and all that. So maybe you do some content about how to decide if a home repair project is something you can do or if you need to bring in the big guns, right? So that kind of content really helps because a lot of people will start a project not understanding that it's over their heads or that maybe they're afraid to try something that they totally could do themselves. Um, and while that might feel at first like, you know, you're losing business, you're not because they're seeing you as trustworthy because you're not nickel and diming them. You're saying, hey, no, you can maybe replace that doorknob, okay? But if you're looking to redo your kitchen, maybe we should talk first. <laughs> So it's that kind of content that's really good. Um, so yeah, so you're gonna do that. You're gonna talk about trends, go to Google Trends, go to news headlines, it's all there for you. Um, if you are stuck and it does happen to everybody, um, oops, I'm sorry, that's the wrong one, this one. I get stuck. I started making a list for myself. I started sharing that list with some people. Now it's an ebook. So I have 130 content ideas, okay? So if you do one piece of content a week, you're looking at over two years. So go get it, uh, georgetechcoach.net forward slash content ideas, no spaces. I just need your email address and you get that for free. Um, there's, e there's 130 content ideas, but actually some of those content ideas will bubble will, will up more. So it's really more than that, but 130 is like lowballing the number of ideas that I'm giving you here. So there we go. I've taken away all of the concern and stress over what am I gonna talk about? Go to this list. Do it random, lay it out, print it out, lay it in front of you, close your eyes, put your finger on something, and there you go, that's what you're gonna write about. Take the stress out of it. Just sit there, do it, and go forward with it, um, and make it super simple on yourself. Okay, oh my, this is running long, but we knew that was gonna happen, right? Okay, so in the next section, we're gonna talk about how, you're, how you can get the most mileage from each, each piece of content that you create. I'm losing my voice, hang on. Sorry, meant to hit mute, I totally forgot. Uh, yeah, so we're gonna talk about how, you know, so if you're going to write, a, let's say you're going to write a blog post, right? Or you're going to do a video. The, most people do that and then they walk away from it and that's, that's it, right? They did all that work and it's just that one thing. And gee, I hope somebody comes looking for that one thing. I'm now going to talk about ways that you could stretch that, turn it into more pieces of content, all with that same idea 
um, very often with just a little bit of editing. So we're going to do that next. All right. If you find this content helpful, um, if you'd like to stay on top of what's coming down the pike from me, uh, you can sign up for the mailing list for free. I you are safe. I don't sell it. I don't have sponsors. This is just a way for me to keep you in the loop on what's coming. So you go to yourtechcoach.net forward slash mailing list uh, to join the mailing list. And then that way you'll know what shows content is coming up um, and any other things that I'm working on. So hopefully you will reach out and uh, go and do that. It's very, very simple. Also, if you have an idea for a show, right? If there, you have something that you want me to cover, go to your tech coach. That's not the right one. Hang on. Oh, right, because I was playing with something. Well, that too. I mean, we're going to be on Twitch later, but hang on. We're not. There we go. This is what I wanted to show you. If you go to yourtechcoach.net, uh, there's a contact form on there. So if you have a question, if you have an idea for a show, if you have something you want me to cover, you can go there um, and let me know what that is. The only thing I ask is if you have a burning question, right? If you have a question that you need a fast answer to, um, make sure you let me know that because then I will respond to you. Give me your email, your Twitter ID, or however it is you want me to get back to you. Um, otherwise, if you don't give me that, I'm going to assume that you want me to cover it in a future show. Okay? All right. Let's get through the end of this. So now we're going to talk about repurposing your content. Okay? So when you create a blog post or a video or an ebook, whatever it is, whatever kind of content you're creating, you want to repop repurpose that. You want to get as much content out of that one effort as you possibly can. Uh, so we're going to, we're going to dive into that. So let's start with a scenario just because it'll be easier to explain it, right? So we're going to pick a starting point. So let's say that you're doing, or you're going to start doing a weekly Facebook live um, or a weekly video. Okay. Just, it could be anything, but we're just going to focus on that for context. Most people, they do the video, they do the live stream. That's it. But instead, there are things that you can do to get more mileage out of it. Uh, let me bring that down. So after you do it, after you, you do your video or you, know, you do your live video or you post your video, next step should be to send out an email to your mailing list, letting them know that you did that video because they may have missed the live, right? They may not have seen, like as they go to their timelines, maybe they didn't see in their timeline the, the posting that you did. So tell them about it. Send them a quick email. Doesn't take any time at all, right? A couple of seconds. Once you start doing these emails, you'll get those out really quick. Um, don't necessarily like rely on your own like personal Outlook account or Gmail account. Go to something like uh, Constant Contact or MailChimp. Uh, MailChimp still has a free level. I'm not sure about the other ones. Um, but so that way you can build a template, like get your logo in it, get all the information in it, and then it's just real easy. You just open it up, you put in the content, you give it a heading and you pick your day and time to mail it out and boom, you're good to go. And you're already getting more eyes on that work you've already done. Did I double that up? I did. Okay. Sorry. I forgot what number two was. Oh, well, it'll come back to me. Oh, I know what it was. <laughs> okay. All right. So number one was doing the email. I'm sorry about this. I evidently cut and paste the wrong thing. Um, then number two is after you do your live or you post your video, um, post about it on social media and give them a link. Now that's a little bit hard on Instagram. So what you're going to want to do is maybe do like a link tree kind of thing. Um, and I can explain that in another show if you want me to. Um, but basically you just want to put it on social media. So if you're a Twitter person, you know, put a little p post out there, you know, Hey, I just posted this video. It's about this, throw a couple of hashtags on it. Two or three is good for Twitter. Um, and Again, let more people know about it, right? Encourage more people to go see it. Or it could, if people had already heard it and then they didn't have time to look at it, it would be a reminder to them to go and check it out. So you can go and do that one. Uh, let's keep going. Uh, okay, take part of what you did, right? Take part of the video um, and edit it down. Like take a couple of minutes out of it that, that you know is in context, right? One little piece of a topic that you covered and then turn it into a video and put it on, you know, Facebook or Instagram or Twitter or, you know, wherever you want to put it. Um, if you've got several segments that you can pull out of that one video, well then, you know, that one video is now turned into multiple pieces of content and then you can schedule them out, right? And put them on Pinterest and put it on, um, what do they call it? Uh, IGTV, right? All the places you can upload video to, you can go and put it out there and you may end up with a series out of it, right? So maybe you did one live stream or you did one video and it just so happened to turn in that it just turns out to logically group into like 
two, three, five little segments. Right? So you, you take a segment, trim it, put a title at the front of it, and at the you know end of it, say uh, you know for more on this topic, you know check out this next video, and then they can go and watch that piece. Because some people are overwhelmed by the concept of like, okay, my show has now been running almost forty minutes. Um, so if you take the content, like right, I'm doing a local recording of this, so I can take this content and I can break it, right? I've had several segments in here. I can take a segment, chop it up, and people are more likely, people were not able to watch 40 minutes, maybe more likely to watch a five minute video, right? Or a six minute video. Um, but you're now spreading that same content, right? I'm not having to redo anything. I'm just having to go in and chop it up a little bit and maybe, you know, window dress the beginning and the end. Uh, and you're gonna get more people seeing it, they're gonna get more value out of it, and you're also addressing the fact that people consume things differently. People consume information differently, they consume their content differently, so again, you're just casting that wider net. Do a watch party, right? You don't have to change a thing, right? So you just take the video that you've got, and then you go to another platform, so I do this. Um, tomorrow, well, no, actually tonight I'll do it. Um, on Twitch, I'm going to do a watch party of the show I did last Thursday here on Facebook, on YouTube, and on Mixer because I can't multicast there because I'm an affiliate. So I'm going to take the exact same show and I'm going to go and I'm going to play it over on Twitter and I'm going to be there in chat answering questions and talking to people, but I haven't had to recreate any more content. It's already there and it's all there to use. So that's another way to do it. And you can do that on any platform that lets you upload video. Um, it's better if you can be there to interact with your audience, but there are also ones with, that'll let you do it without having to be there. Um, it's just, if you're looking for engagement, it's better to be there. Create a monthly newsletter, okay? And include summaries of the videos you did, right? Touching a little bit on the topic and then giving them a link to it, whether it's a blog post or a video or whatever. Um, spread the word, right? Maybe they missed it. Maybe they faithfully are watching your content now, but they missed one, right? Uh, the kid had a thing at school, you know, and they kept saying they were going to go back to it and they forgot. So you send that monthly newsletter out and you're like, hey, in case you missed any content, here's the stuff, here's the links, here's the topics I covered on. They'll thank you for it because you've just made it easy for them to get the content that they wanted to see anyway. Write a blog post. Here we are with the blog again. It's true, right? So you want to make sure that it's on your website too. So write a blog post about the topic. Uh, and then suggest to people, go and check out the video for more details on it, or you can actually embed the video in your blog post so they stay on your site uh, to consume it. And the last one, in a couple of months, do a did you miss email, right? Repost it on social media. People who have never seen it will see it for the first time. Again, people who maybe had seen it, maybe re want to rewatch it, or they missed it and now they get the opportunity to see it. So there's absolutely nothing wrong with taking, you know, content that you wrote a couple of months ago and then sharing the love again, like getting it out there again. It doesn't cost you any more than the couple of minutes it takes to write the uh, tweet or to put a little post on your blog about it. Um, maybe go and post it on Instagram or post it on Pinterest. By the way, you can do videos on Pinterest. Not everybody knows that, but that's true. Um, so again, for no extra effort, hey, Deadly Frog over on Mixer, how are you doing? Um, so for no extra effort, you get a whole nother set of audience, all right? A whole bunch more mileage out of that content that you already produced, which is all kinds of awesome. Um, okay, so I do have a bonus tip for you. Um, but again, I just want to remind you that I have a mailing list, just like I was talking about, right? In order to send things to your mailing list, you have to get people on your mailing list. So you put a page on your website or sometimes the uh, email tools have it. In my case, it's on my website. Go to yourtechcoach.net forward slash mailing list, and that way you will get all the notifications about the stuff I'm spending out. See how that works? It works out nicely. How you doing, Deadly? Uh, all right, we are getting to the end of this. I did have a bonus tip for you, though. So, yes, okay, content marketing does take time, absolutely. But there are little tricks that you can do. So the bonus tip I have for you is that you can... And I'm just realizing that I may not have actually done this. I didn't. Okay, that's all right. I know how else to get it. You can use a tool like Google Transcribe, which, by the way, is actually, a, it's, it's, sorry, it's live transcribe. That's actually how I do these captions. But it also saves down. So you see how it's taking the words I'm saying, and it's putting them as text on the screen. Well, guess what? I can also save down a file of that, which I can then download and edit to make my blog post. Massive, massive time saver. I mean, massive. So you can use something like that 
streamline things for yourself, right? So you're like, oh, I did the video. Now I gotta go write the blog post. No, see, because if you would turn this on, you can just download this, right? Editing is easier than writing. You can turn this into a blog post, maybe add a little, get a little of extra thoughts and use that for your blog post. Even better is a tool called, I think it's Google Record, I mean, Recorder. Now, unfortunately right now, this is only for Pixel users, but it'll, it'll get out there to everybody else. Um, it, it does what Google Live Transcribe does, but even better. Um, and it will download, it will save not only the, the text, right? The words that I'm saying, but it also saves down the audio, which is a good way to turn it into a podcast. And you can also pull the audio out of your video. So that's another way to do it. But I'm just saying there are tools out there for free that as long as you remember to hit the button will help all this process become much easier. So that's just an extra, extra little tip. Okay. So we're going to wrap this up now. Uh, we have been talking about, for anybody who jumped to the end for some reason, uh, whether or not content marketing is worth it. And the answer, of course, is yes, it absolutely is. Now, of course, yes, it takes time, it takes energy, it takes planning. But look at it this way. It is an investment in your business, right? And in you, right? Your, your business is you if you're anything like me. So this is an investment. And if you just look at it that way, you're good to go. If you use these tips, right? you will find that it gets easier, right? And because of the benefit it brings, you're going to win, right? You're going to get benefits from it that are far above and beyond the effort that you've put into putting this content out there. Um, it's gonna help you, it's gonna help your customers, it's gonna help your business. So yes, absolutely do it. Don't overwhelm. Um, if you are stuck for ideas, take my free list, <laughs> go use that for your ideas. Um, but do, if you haven't, if you're not doing content marketing, start, pick one thing, put a blog on. Don't want to put a blog out there. You don't want to deal with your website right now. Go onto Facebook live, hit record, start talking to your audience. Don't get overwhelmed. You don't have to spend a fortune. Okay. You've got this, right? That's all you need. Or if you've got a laptop or you've got a webcam on your computer, that's all you need, right? Yes. You know, over time, if you really get committed to it, maybe you're going to want to upgrade your microphone or something, but get started, start doing it. Take what you do, whatever it is, find one thing to repurpose it to. Start there and build off of that. And in the end, it will just all start to snowball in the best possible way. Because yes, snowballs are fun when it's nice. All right, everybody, thank you for hanging in. I know this was a long one, but lots of things to cover. It's a big topic. Um, if you'd like to continue this conversation, I will be on Twitch tonight. Um, and now I can bring that up. So yeah, I'm on Twitch after this. And you can just go to twitch.tv or tech coach. We can continue this conversation there if you'd like. Uh, we can talk about related topics, whatever you like. I usually jump on around 1030 or so. Uh, so feel free to come and join the party there. Um, also, if you don't want to go to Twitch, that's fine. Um, but I am here every Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern time. Still 8 p.m. even after the time change. Uh, I'm on Facebook, on YouTube, and on Mixer. And I do hope that we will see you again. And maybe you'll bring a friend next time. Um, and if you have any questions, if you have comments, if you have a topic you would like me to cover, feel free to go to the website. That is not the right one again, because I forgot to change it. Clearly I need to build a unique one for this. There we go. You can go to the website uh, and fill out the form and let me know what your question is. If you have a topic for the show, I'm happy to do that. All right, everybody have a good night and um, tomorrow's Friday. So hopefully your weekend will be good and we will talk again next Thursday. Bye. Thank you.